Hi, you're with Julian on the brown note. Uh, a bit late in the day, but I thought I'd throw my two penneth worth in about the um, not guilty verdict for Carl Rittenhouse on the uh, shooting of three Black Lives Matter protesters and the murder of two of them. Um, if anyone was surprised here, they weren't watching that he got off scot free. I mean, leading into the trial, he's 100% guilty. But in the lead up, to the trial it was very clear that the judge had one job and that was to work to ensure that Kyle Rittenhouse got off the entire game was rigged in the weeks leading up to the start of the trial the judge declared that the prosecution couldn't even use the words victims because it was prejudiced everything was designed to ensure that Kyle got off the prosecution wasn't particularly well run it shouldn't really matter in clear-cut cases of murder to be honest but um, they should have probably gone for manslaughter and um, they over it and made a few stumbles. But when you've got a judge directing everything and was beaming from ear to ear when Carl got off, it's um, not a good look. But it's the American self-defense system is a travesty. It is a way of protecting white men with guns no matter what. Um I mean, if you're, for instance, the parallel here is if you're a white man with an AR-15 assault weapon and you use it against someone, you've got a really good chance of getting off. If you're a 12-year-old black boy like Tamar Rice with a fake toy cap gun in a park, you may well get blown away and no one will ever get held accountable for it. Even though it was a toy gun... And even though you're a 12 year old boy playing in the park, you might be a black man in Walmart picking up one of the guns off of the shelves to look at it while you're on your phone to your wife. Uh, a white person might phone the police who turn up and shoot you in the back and no one will pay for it. Self-defense here seems to exist solely to protect a white man with a gun and a black man raising their hands, having a toy gun if they're a child is still considered an acceptable reason to kill them. There is a definite disparity in the way that the justice system is set up. But the whole notion of these people with guns, the um, the like the baseline now is, if I walked over to your house with a gun and you got scared that I had a gun and tried to get it off me, I could legally think that I was in danger. And that would be enough for me to shoot you. This is something that is really going wrong in America. It is driven by race because it's deemed that, you know, this is protecting militias and vigilantes, uh, which it isn't. It is, protect <laughs> it is protecting murderers. If you bring a gun to the situation, you're guilty because if... Carl Rittenhouse didn't bring a gun to that situation and just went there to help out and provide medical attention and patrol the streets. No one gets shot. It's bringing in a gun that should be the issue. You have brought the danger. You've walked into the danger and you've brought the danger with you. Even if he walked into that dangerous situation, if he did so without a gun, it doesn't happen. Where did we reach such a point where somebody that actually brings and creates a dangerous situation gets the benefit of self-defense. Why don't we give that same level of self-defense to the victim? Why are the victims of Carl Rittenhouse not deserving of a right to self-defense? Why is it okay for he, him to shoot people, but not for the people he actually killed to fear for their lives and grab his gun? which is what happened, because they were right that he would kill them. So why does he get the benefit of self-defense, but the people that he's pointing a gun at don't? He is the interloper here. He doesn't live there. He travelled into state to get there. He wasn't old enough to buy that gun. But the main thing is, is that we only ascribe self-defense to one side of the equation, which is the victor. And that doesn't make any sense. If someone points a gun at me, I have a right to self-defense too. I, I should be allowed to try and get that gun off of them because I think they're going to shoot me. But if they shoot me, they have a right to self-defense. It is not working. 
One dis- difference, we've seen the Ahmed Aubrey case where his three good old boys chased him down in pickup trucks while he was jogging and they killed him and, he, and they got convicted of murder and that should be you know, evidence of um, the system working um, in a very rare case where they actually got busted. But... You know, in that instance, I think they just ticked too many boxes. They were riding around in pickup trucks with shotguns chasing a black man along the road. I just think the optics on that one were too much. But that case isn't so far from Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin was a 15-year-old kid who visited his family and left the flat and walked to a shop carrying a bag of Skittles and was pursued by George Zimmerman who is a man of very low character, involved multiple times in the police, including, I think, assault on a female police officer. He said he thought the guy was suspicious, even though he's a 15-year-old guy. He was a black guy. So he follows him. They get into the what the other guy is not very happy about being followed by George Zimmerman. And uh, a fight ensues, and Zimmerman shoots him and kills him. Again, this is someone bringing the danger. Why do they get the right to self-defense? It's not that different to the Ahmed Aubrey case. Both cases were black men walking along or running, jogging, uh, minding their own business and had nothing on them. They were unarmed. They had committed no crime and they were under suspicion because they were black. And the people that shot Ahmed Aubrey have been convicted of murder, which is a real rarity. But the guy that shot Trayvon Martin got off scot-free. Self-defense. So it doesn't work, the American notion of self-defense. If you bring the danger, you shouldn't have the self-defense law. And if you bring a gun, that should be the defining characteristic. Who gave you the right? It's in the Constitution. But who gives you the right to bring guns to situations? We've just seen in Texas a guy get off because um, an estranged husband came to his house to remonstrate with the wife. Um, A verbal altercation ensued. The homeowner brings out a shotgun and the other guy tried to grab it and he shot him with a shotgun and killed him and got off scot free. Why do you need to bring a gun to every situation? If you bring a gun, you're kind of justifying the fact that you're going to end up killing someone. If you haven't brought a gun, maybe there's a bit of tussling and wrestling and it's, it's over. But every time you bring a gun, you've got the risk that there's going to be a gunshot going off and you're murdering someone. And it's not working in America, and it's obviously clearly defined along racial lines when we're seeing endless amounts of unarmed black men killed uh, with impunity and a near endless stream of white men with guns that they brought to the situation getting off with self-defense laws. Your self-defense laws aren't self-defense laws.